Hello everybody, Reggie Time here, my first video in a short while, um, I'll explain the reason for that in just a moment, but um, I'm introducing what's hopefully going to be a fun new series, and it's regarding tank row management. Um, it's something that I've only been made aware of very recently, maybe at the start of the month I think it was, before then I didn't really know anything about it until a guy from my Facebook group, shout out to Jason Williams. Um, brought it to our attention via the Facebook group and then another player I, res I respect pretty much as much as any player that I've ever come on contact with online. Um, he also decided it was a good idea to do so. If those guys think it's a good idea, I thought, well, um, why not give it a whirl myself? I've been struggling for decent content to put on my channel for a while. I've been kind of like devoid of creative ideas and I'm not saying this is a particularly creative idea but at least it gives me a purpose for making some videos so that's what we're going to do. So what is tank row management? It's basically this, there's more to it than this and I'll put the link to um, to this page from pokerstrategy.com, I'll put the link to this page below the video so you can um, look it up for yourself but basically it's just aggressive bankroll management at the lower stakes there are some caveats involved um, you need to be a winning player before you start really doing it to have much chance of success um, you need to be able to reload at the bottom if you get broke because there's a good chance you're going to go broke and you also need to be really flexible in moving up and down limits um, I meet all of those criteria especially the last one because I played limits ranging from 10 and L to 100 nil in the last 12 months and probably will again in the next 12 months too so moving up and down between limits has never been a particularly big issue for me um so hopefully we're going to be able to take this from we started on unibet we just want um, the random amount that i had it so we've got 117 euros starting which means we're going to start in this in this bracket here and we're just going to follow this exactly to the letter um, I'll be keeping checking my bankroll during the sessions and when I reach $151 151 euros as it is then I shall be moving up to the 25 and L etc etc and moving up and back down and I need to read into it more about when to move down before we start the challenge properly because at the moment I'm only aware of when to move up um, I'm going to read on before I start playing tonight and see when it suggests you move back down as well and i'm going to be fully compliant with it. whatever the rules of this is i'm going to be fully compliant with it but we're not going to play 100 now because um to be frank i don't really feel like playing 100 now much at the moment it's i'm assuming those games are going to be very tough and um i'm happy just to like spin up to the 575 mark and then go from tank roll management to bank roll management so hopefully we're going to spin up a bank roll really quickly and then hopefully get into proper bankroll management where we can get to a limit of like 50 and L um, where we can start making a reasonable side income from puck because at 10 and L 25 and no regular tables it's really hard to make a side income 50 and L it's really easy to make a side income well not really easy but it's pretty easy to make a side income you've only got to make what anything between 5 and 10 stacks a month and bam voila you have a side income don't you so it's going to be like a tank roll bankroll management challenge very different to the last one I did where we wanted to go from 100 to 1,000 using traditional bankroll management. This is just going to be like from whatever it is, 117 to, um, I don't know, say 500 maybe. Um, and then we'll go into proper bankroll management and then maybe the series will end. If, once we get the tank roll bit, maybe we'll call this series, I don't know, something like tank roll to bankroll, something like that. And once we get to the bankroll bit, the series will end and then I'll probably be devoid of ideas for... Um, videos from my YouTube channel again, but at least hopefully we'll have got some good content in along the way. Um, so there we go, in a moment we'll be along with four tables of 10 and on Unibet and hopefully we can start this spin up. So we are off with the play. We started on 117 euros, we checked earlier. Um, the goal is to get to 151 euros and then load up some 25 and L tables and moving back down should I drop half a buy-in. That's kind of how it's going to work. So when you take your, your shots at the highest limits, at the higher limits, sorry, you can't really afford to get off to a sluggish start or you're going to be straight back down again. That's kind of how it's going to work and that's why it's really important to be somebody who can swiftly and effortlessly move between limits without getting tilted by it, which is definitely a strength of mine. So hopefully we're going to make this work. So yeah, for now we might not make 
I mean, there's a very good chance we're not going to make the 151 euros for this video. I'm not sure how long the video is going to be. We're just going to play until until I've had enough for the night. And I'm probably going to make videos on on a daily basis and hopefully capture all the thrills and spills of taking part in the tank roll challenge. I don't play very much poker through the day these days, just because there's too many distractions going on. Um, wife, TV, pets, noise. I tend to only play poker after 10 p.m. So hopefully we'll be able to capture quite a lot of my play on video. I'd quite enjoy making super long videos, so um, well, we can catch you quite a few hours of my play. I'm not going to be massively commenting on any spots. If there's just nothing much going on, I'm not going to be saying very much. I'm not going to be looking to like always fill the air. If we get a spell where we don't get many good cards to play, well, then there's going to be a bit of silence. I'd like to back it up with some music, but then YouTube just mutes you. So there will be some periods of silence during the videos. You might want to watch it on double speed, actually, and just look at the interesting hands and skip through the not so interesting stuff. If you do see any hands that I play that I don't comment on, if you ask me to look back at the time of the video um, and say, right, this happened at this, you know, at 23 minutes, 8 seconds, can you explain it? I'll be more than happy to do that. check folded the two jacks here we raise under the gun we got three bet we got pretty hideous flop for our hand and um we will be continuing I think we're going to three with the nines here against an opponent that isn't playing a full stack. Definitely value to be had pre flop. It's going to be pretty grim if he shoves on me or what have you, but um, I'm guessing we're just going to stack off. Check and not fold on this flop. Probably just going to check call down unless it if it rolls off like another over card we may check fold turn but if it stays a 10 high board we're probably just going to check call down that's an interesting turn card if it's one of the over it's one of the only over cards that we can consider check calling on and we're still just in check mode hopefully we show a winner ace eight we'll take that Didn't see an awful lot of value in betting the river with whatever, whatever it was, fourth nuts or something. It's super hard to get paid with just like, hand as bad as the fourth nuts or fifth nuts, whatever it was on that board. fan of offsuit aces it's not for a 3x smaller open i would probably defend but not that into defending a6 off first the 3x yeah we've got the best time a lot of the time but it's we're not going to realize that much equity with it i don't think well that's probably the wrong way to describe it but i think it's going to be a, a really marginal spot that we just don't need to get involved with until we know more about our opponent at least the king seven offsuit go against an unknown 
check Kogan with the King Queen on table three. Mm. Only betting half, but I think we're going to go for a race here. Tons of value we can get. Ace Jack, Ace Ten, Diamonds. That is not a particularly exciting river. Just gonna hope it goes check check here when he checks down Ace Jack, something like that, I guess. Ace Seven, same thing. Virtually. taking care to top my stack up whenever possible just to make sure that when we do get a hand that wants to play for all the beans we've got as many beans in front of us as possible pain in the ass that Unibet don't have auto reload but then um, whatever it is what it is do I want to squeeze the king queen off suit I think we do we got a call with the king queen suited I think the king queen off Going to play better as a squeeze, it's certainly going to be played better in a heads up part, and hopefully, we just take it down pre. Hmm, interesting on table three, we've had an open and a small three bet, no, not that small, and then a cold four bet. I think we just let the ace queen go. Um, giving up with a 10-9 on, on with a king queen on table four we would have sucked out on table three but i still think it was a great fold so you have to call with the ace jack on table one just because of his bet size not because i think we have the best hand but just because of his bet size if he's ever doing this hands like ace 10 or some random flush draw then Folding for this size will be a big mistake. And we're getting nearly four and a bit to four, nearly five to one on our bluff catchy. And I don't think we're going to be good very often, but we need to be good like what? 20% of the time. And here trips. And if that's the way he wants to go about getting his value, then we're happy to have him to our right. Mega demonstrating that maybe he's not so mega down on table three. We're going to fold the ace queen if we get four, but on table four. Get the fold, we'll take that. We need to fall in love with Unibet. I think it's, um, it's a lot to like about it. It's smooth, everything seems to work fine. Um, reputable company, cash out to quick, no problems ever with depositing, never had to use support, but the support on 2 plus 2 is, is excellent as far as I can tell. It might be my new favourite place to play poker. Check 2 is now on table 4, we probably just sucked out, so we'll go for a Decent size value bet. Hope he thinks we have a miss flush. He doesn't. He was just bluff catching. I guess he wasn't caring what we had there. He just cared that he finally made his hand with his ace. Or she. Check 
of suit. So with the third time with three bet this guy in a very short order, so you need to be aware of that. Because he might just start getting fed up with us and who knows? Some light four bets might start coming in. I don't want to over adjust if the first time we fall but we will probably just fold. Um but you need to be aware of how often or that like your frequencies for doing things have been at particular tables when you're playing regular tables and this is the third time that we've three bet when Chelsevich has been in the pot so he might well be getting pissed off with us. I'd be getting pissed off with me if I was him so and we'll bear that in mind. Or maybe next time we'll maybe turn down some light three bet opportunities in the next couple of orbits and oh and at the same time hope to get some strong three bet opportunities. Giving up with the five four suited on this flop. May stab this turn if he checks again. And a view to bet in both streets. Probably gonna call because he's bet smallish. And just gonna fold the river. What is it with these paired boards? Again, same premise as last time, checking with the plan on giving up, but if we turn a club or an eight or a four and we get checked to, we'd probably start trying to semi bluff. Uh, three bet the ace queen. Um, Given my image on this table, probably just call it off if he four bets or what have you. This time our opponent here doesn't stab the turn, so hopefully it means they're on the check forward line. Last time we checked back a flop, they um, stabbed the turn. This time they've decided to go for a check raise. I'm not going to chase a low flush on a paired board, so I'm going to just give up. Checking about the ace queen, we got called behind. I'm not going to see, but just two overs in a three bet pot with my current image at table four. Kind of a small bet on table two. Interesting spot because many people would just have bet the flop and bet the turn with their pair plus flush draw. I think we have to call it off here because we just don't look like we have an ace very often, do we? We just don't look like we have an ace. It's like one of the better hands I'm going to have in this sort of like checking and calling down this spot. This is definitely going to be one of the strongest hands I get to the river with in this way. So I guess we just have to call. We lose to an ace nine. Never mind. I didn't see bet the flop because, um, as many of you might know, I'm a bit of a Doug Bok fanboy these days, and I read his module or everyone, what are you going to call it, the free one he put out for the playing flush draws earlier this year. And one of his rules was if you have like a flush draw and a pack of pair in a flush draw, just play it like you would if you just had the flush draw. If you sorry, if you didn't have the flush draw, so if I'd opened ace deuce there and didn't have the flush draw, I would probably check call with my ace deuce in that spot. So just because I got the flush draw, it doesn't necessarily follow that I have to bet with it. So that's why I went down the road of playing it like I didn't have the flush draw. So um, 
it makes a lot of sense to me that line it's not something they ever considered before I'd been made aware of it on the on the module but once I made aware of it I thought yeah that does make quite a lot of sense it gives me like lots of spots where we can just get to the river and even call some with some pretty strong hands that I previously wouldn't have got there with so I think it helps me be more balanced overall three bit then now why would we be three bit in a lot at table table four and we get a pretty horrible flop and we get a multi-way flop again so we're not a horrible flop but the ace has come um, my image is pretty piss poor down on table four right now hopefully we get to capitalize on that sooner rather than later by actually making a fucking hand Giving up with the 10 8 if he checks to us on the turn i'll probably start thinking about bluffing with it but not on the flop we just have no equity i want to see two checks before i start running really low equity bluffs don't like doing it on the first check because there's just not enough good turn cards for us to allow us to continue barreling whereas when he checks twice we hopefully have a lot more fold equity Given his stack size, I think we're going to three bet the eights. And just if he jams, just click the call button. And that is now the fifth three bet. I think it's a fifth three bet we made at that table. So I need to be hyper aware of that. Because my image on this at the moment is going to be pretty shit. It's going to be like of a really bad, loose, aggressive player. Which hopefully, as I said earlier, hopefully we can capitalise on that before the image drops. It'd be nice to connect with the flop, wouldn't it? Yes, on this board texture, we're going to continue. We're going to continue our story. We do have some backdoor spades if we get disappointed and called. And it's a really good board for our range. Uh, my image on table what two is completely different to on table one. Um, he is jammers, whatever. Oh, table four, where well, we've got the lousy image. We pick up the aces, which is pretty much exactly what we've been waiting for. Don't give me the walk, that would suck. Oh, I'll give over. Give over, that's horrible. Set up the image, you get the aces then you don't get the action that is rank it just seems like it might be a quite a bad table table for um, no short stacks there anymore doesn't seem to be a whole bunch of action at it but we'll stick with it Oh dear me, kings and aces with an image that we've cultivated and literally not a cent of action. I'm going to raise my ace jack here on this board texture. There's plenty of hands I can be doing this as a bluff. I'd do it with king queen, I'd do it with some non-nut flush draws. 
um, eight nine. Plenty of plenty of plenty of bluffs I can have here. So definitely raise for value and to protect my hand a little. Queen Jack, King Jack's not going to fold. Ten X might not fold. Clubs aren't going to fold. King Queen's not going to fold. So all kinds of hands we can get value from. And if we just do go with a slow play, then I think I'm not strong enough to slow play with on that board texture. There's too many ways that turn cards can come down that either slow our opponent down or allow him to overtake us. That's a pair. Table one. We have the backup of the back door, not flush draw two. Just gonna keep betting with that race queen, I think. There shouldn't be too many king X you can have. In fact, no, I think we'll actually start with a check, check or proceed with a check call from here because again there shouldn't be too much king because he can have there's also a min raise under the gun there shouldn't be too many flush draws he can have either so it's not a spot that i'm super happy with i like the seven on the river um and two nines flop call i can get on board with pre-flop can get on board with. i think the turn bet is really quite poor for my opponent there um i think our check definitely got some extra value that's top set which we like we do like a bit of top set action Pretty, well, not super wet board, but there are definitely some draws out there. So, gonna go with a reasonably chunky bet, and we just get the fold, which is somewhat disappointing. Might have we been tiny three bet, king ten. Let's see a lot of red out here, please, unit bet. That is not a lot of red, is it? Not a lot of red going on there, so we'll just fold. The tank roll challenge people do advocate playing speed poker at the first few limits of this challenge and then moving to regular tables when you get higher. We won't be doing the speed poker part because I don't like speed poker, basically. So we'll not be doing that. We'll be doing it all the old school way. Doing it all reg tables.
we won't be using this name tank crawl in the hallway either because I'm going to assume there are going to be some regulars on Unibet that are cheating and using forms of tracking software so we set off using the tank rolling screen name just for the pilot video but then from after going forward from this we'll be using multiple different screen names as is my usual mo on on Unibet And when I was playing here the other week, I was playing some 25 and L, and I saw the same guys using the same screen names every single day. And one of two things is happening there, and I may have commented on this before, that I either really stupid and don't understand just how valuable it is to play semi-anonymously, or, much more likely, they are just cheating, and they are using Hold'em Indicator or something like that, and play on the same screen name all the time, so they can track their winnings. I suspect with lots of players that do that, it will be the latter because they're too lazy to keep a spreadsheet or what have you. Um, if you do do that and you're not cheating, then I don't mean any offence whatsoever. But if you are cheating, then fuck you. I make no apologies for calling a spade a spade, I guess. Leave us as much wiggle room post flop against. Oh. So we have to call one sixty to win two forty. Let me just let it go. Hopefully we're going to be the person that gets to relieve Mr. Gator of his chips before. Sadly, we're not going to be. Sadly, we're not going to be that guy. When you see somebody coming into the table with 20 blinds and like jamming two hands in a row, you know they're programmed to just basically bust their roll. And you want to be that guy that does it. It wasn't to be for us that time. So the moment the tanks that are rolling are slightly stuck in the mud. We've been playing for what half an hour now and we're actually stuck two euros. Motherfucker. We've had aces and kings too. Aces, kings, queens, sets, and we're still stuck. Slightly bigger raise this time because of his stack depth. Second time this guy's min three bet me, or virtually min three bet me. Hopefully we'll connect this time. We do not connect. Not going to see bet this ball with the king jack, with no back doors whatsoever. Much had the best hand here with our race eight, so we're not gonna, gonna try and just like limp our way to show down with it. It's 
surely he bets a turn with the full house with the king. SM might just be good here. Happy days. This is when we check back the flop and he turns. If he had a king, he would have turned the boat. I don't think many players have the discipline to check again there and try and induce some bluffs. So I think if we're losing there, we're either going to be losing to a small pocket pair that he's now going to be thin value with, or we're just going to win. Maybe chop with some ace high sometimes, but again, I think he's going to check a lot of ace highs to me, which he probably thinks he might be thinking that they're good. And it's changed his sizing there. Which is interesting. King Jack versus under the gun. We do have two weaker players, but on the button I think I call there, but on the cutoff. I think we just let it go. Don't really want to be playing too much three handed. Some value for our race on table four. Do not want to see him leading this river. I think it's going to be a fold. We got beat very much. A top pair, no kicker. I know we caught him bluffing last time, but that might make him less likely to want to be bluffing this time who knows wow this guy loves his fucking min three bets doesn't he he loves them oh that's very irritating That hand on table three fills me with quite a lot of joy. Okay, so I just know now that we're in a good game there. Possibly tighten up our opening ranges just slightly and obviously widen our stacking off ranges. That'll be the immediate adjustment that I'll be making at table three. I think table four, oh no, someone's joined. I was about to leave table four. We're not going to leave table one, even though it's three handed because this fellow keeps limping, so clearly not a regular. I have no, I have no objections to playing short handed and just not a huge fan of it on, on video. Um, largely because quite often I'm talking about this, talking about that and it's not that easy to keep my concentration when I'm talking about spots at different tables so I'm probably a little less talking especially in the more mundane situations Hoping he doesn't have an eight, and hoping he does have an eight on table one, table two. Sorry, not have been two point five x in from the button, but because of the fish in the blind on table one, make it three x.
Mm. In min races. Normally I would think about three bay and Harry's hand, but given how an opponent's ever once shown enjoys to limp, I'm gonna respect the min race and just see a flop. Try and get to the river now. Unless we improve to trips or two pair, then we'll be trying to get some raises in. Maybe value bet this trip. I'm a little bit concerned that he's just going to snap me off with like ace seven or something, but ace jack, wow, even stronger. Don't like the really small cards for stealing with. Well, just playing in general. That they require you to bluff too much in games where having high bluff frequencies probably isn't going to be the best strategy. Min three bet on table three. We have the ace king. He will be meeting Mr. Four bet. Of course, well, he's already been a four bet. Um, I think there's no choice but still to go for the cold. Um, not the cold four bet. The whatever it is, fucking five bet. Yeah, it's a five bet, isn't it? Pretty gross if this guy shows here won't be massive but wow we muted that sound I'm just gonna fold make a very very exploitable fold here because I don't see there's much chance of him bluffing using this size in in this spot it's a very unusual spot we have a five bet fold ace king but um In that exact spot, it's fine, and it absolutely was fine. Five bet folding ace king. Welcome to Knit World. What is it with all this min three bet nonsense? I'm not understanding. Or is it with the ace popping every time I've got a fucking pair too? A little bit more confident with my nines now the second ace has come. We will check calling this river if he bets. I feel the table one will close in a minute because Unibet tend not to like you playing heads up. I quite often just close tables. I'm going to bet this turn and then check back the river against an opponent on table one, I think.
and you could have got some more value there. And now we're going to triple barrel off on table two. Not that fond of doing it against this stack size, but I think we'll probably do it anyway. And the plan was going to be bet, bet, shove. So I guess we just, do we stick to that plan or do we now make a smaller value bet? No, I think we make a smaller one, don't we now? Because the shove was designed, it was going to be designed to get folds now. I bet it's going to be designed to hopefully get calls. Wheelie pajamas. Oh, 10 8. Not sure why it didn't jam there. Table one, table two, even. I quite often just station it on these paired boards with my pocket pairs. I think it's just so often people just don't have it. They just, they're just on a total air ball. He's raised under the gun. He's probably got a Mitch 6x in his range. Uh, probably going to fold on the ace now. I was planning on calling down, but not on the Ace River. As if somebody plays just air ball with like Ace King, Ace Queen, Ace Jack in spots like this, that I can just call down. So when the Ace does hit the river, it's kind of shit because it hits a lot of their like pretty crap bluffs that they've been running I guess bottom versus blind pocket tens is just going to be a four bet get it in sort of situation Way too strong to consider doing anything else with it, of course. Looks like our opponent's just got an like, ace king here, or maybe ace queen without a club. Probably not going to get much action. But we'll, obviously, we need to bet we've got the nut flush. We need to bet. In check race. Now I'm very worried about him having two queens, but. Um, if he's got the two queens, then he's got the two queens. It's just happy days for him. Our only question is, do we raise or not? I don't think I'm going to, because I don't see me getting action from worse too often. I think he just had the ace king. I'm not really sure what the hell he was doing on the turn, but we'll take it. I'm not saying I play perfectly by any stretch of the imagination, but I see people who always presume our regs. And post-flop, they just seem to take such terrible lines. I think against lots of regulars pre-flop, my, maybe I don't even have an edge. 
because I'm not that into the whole pre-flop three bit, four bit, five bit warrior type stuff. But I just see people playing, making so many mistakes post-flop. I mean, just playing hands in like fundamentally wrong fashion. Um, it's it's quite an eye opener to me. Just how badly some regulars do play post-flop. Um, I'm gonna call because he made it super small. Don't need to be stacking up at this point. If we can just see cheap turns. Because we don't expect, we get check min raised by players who are likely to be fish. Don't expect to have like a massive amount of fold equity. Rather just like draw cheaply and hope to get value when we improve. So we raise, flop went check, check, turn went check, call, river's gone check, raise. I think we just can be lighting money on fire here by calling. Given how much this quits three betting, we're not going to open quite as wide on the button. I mean, he's had hands the times we've seen him doing it, but nevertheless. I'm not massively into like opening too light versus people who have shown that they're not scared to three bet. Not on the walk with this, it should be. Nope. I'm not going to try and bluff multi way with the ace jack. I expect to lose to a hand like pocket sixes, but I don't expect sixes to be folding too often either. And we just won, which is nice. Folding two tens against in fact cut off versus big blind with against somebody who doesn't have a full stack size. If I get it in bad, I get it in bad. I'm just gonna deal with it. I said some of the hands people have been willing to stack off with pre flop in these games. Tens are just way too strong. Like less than a hundred big blinds. I'm gonna go for semi rough here with my good shot. On table two. He calls, which is disappointing. Probably just going to give up on the river, I think. Certainly going to give up when he bets.
really not that annoyed with all these tables. They, oh, that's that's why. The numbers of people playing has dropped significantly. It is 20 past one in the morning, which is 20 past two European time. Maybe pause the video until the tables fill up a little bit, possibly. Maybe we're going an hour. Maybe we just call it a night. So we've been getting our three bet called on table one by two people and completely brick the flop. So it's game over there. the Queen Jack suit. This player's been pretty loose and I'd rather call and knock the big blind out of the pot than sorry three better knock the big blind out of the pot rather than call and then go multi way. No, my hand plays pretty well multi way. I'm not that into multi way pots. Pretty hard to win. Problem is that Unibet this time of night tables tend not to fill back up very quickly because there's just less people joining the pool. So tables tend to break more than they like, fill back up. So we might call it a day soon. Ah, now this player's gone from table three. I think it's very likely we're going to call it a day. So yeah, I think we're going to play around to our blinds and then. Um, it'll be a wrap. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. We'll just end up with them. Um, See what our outcomes been for the day, or for the video for the session. Won't be playing at all tomorrow until I don't think I will be anyway. I might have a chance to play a little bit through the day, but um, only if I can guarantee complete solitude. Good shot, two over cards. Table four, we'll just take a stab. Take it down. So, let's bring the lobby in because we played our last hands. 61 plus 62, it's 123, 124, 26, is it? Something like that. 124 euros, which is an increase of 17 euros. So, we may be starting tomorrow on less or more than that if I play the afternoon session but we got off to a winning start we had to win a flip to do it but then we didn't get some action with aces and kings so um, all in all things that seems like a fair result for the hands that we got delivered during the session and I'll be back tomorrow with another video bye bye for now